In theory, chess is the ultimate game of skill. There is no randomness in chess. The outcome of a game doesn't change depending on the roll of a dice okay, or a luck lot. with a random number generator. There are no surprise outcomes in chess. All the moves your opponent can play are laid out on the board in front of you, instead of face down in a deck or hidden in a covered up hand. There are no unfair genetic advantages in the game. One chess player won't have an inherent advantage over another player for having gone through a different type of puberty. No. Chess, at its core, is the perfect game of skill. It's just you, your opponent, and a ticking clock that counts down the amount of time a player has until they're forced to call a forfeit. Before chess clocks were mandated, an insanely common winning strategy to winning a chess match was to simply wear your opponent out. Chess went from a game of skill and logic to a game of endurance, with the average championship match being around 9 hours long. The longest match was in 1843, when Howard Stunton beat Pierre St. Amant after a grueling 14-hour long match. After spectators complained about the sluggish pace of chess matches, an anonymous writer suggested in the Chess Players Chronicle, a magazine owned by the victorious Howard Stunton, that games should be played with an hourglass system. Each player would have access to an hourglass containing three hours worth of sand. When it's his turn, he must flip the hourglass to run the time. Once he passes turn, he may place the hourglass horizontally to suspend the flow of sand. This was a marginal improvement over having literally no timekeeping system, but it flew open the doors to cheating. Players would accidentally turn the wrong end of their hourglass over giving them additional time that their non-cheating opponent didn't have access to. The hourglasses would also be impacted by the weather and humidity of the environment, either slowing down or speeding up the flow of the sand. Which wasn't much of an issue for the specific game that it was measuring since both players either had the same amount of time added or reduced to make their moves. But it became a problem in ensuring consistency between games occurring on different days. Another idea proposed was to give both players wristwatches to mark how much time their opponent had taken. But while watches were certainly more consistent than hourglasses, they were also much less visible. Meaning the tournament organizers had a rough time verifying the accuracy of a player's claims. If white accused black of taking too long of turns, but black claimed to be within the allotted time limits, then how would the organizers know who to believe? there would have to be a third independent timekeeper keeping track of how much time was spent by each player, which adds a whole nother layer of complexity. So the solution in 1883 was to create a compromise between the inconsistent hourglasses that everybody could see, and the consistent wristwatches that only the players were witness to. This was the tumbling chess clock. Two pendulum clocks set on opposite side of a seesaw-like stand. When a player started his turn, he would press his clock down on his side of the seesaw to activate his timer while blocking his opponent's pendulum, stopping his time. Chess clocks would continue evolving until the 1900s, when it became what we recognize today as the chess clock. Two buttons on top of two dials engaged by a double balance lever. Applying pressure to a button would disengage the balance to the corresponding lever while the other lever remains locked. Hitting the opposite button reverses the process. If you enjoy chess, I recommend watching this video on why the queen is the most powerful chess piece despite women historically not having any power at all. Alternatively, you could also hop back onto Netflix and binge watch The Queen's Gambit again.